Hi, I'm Connor Byrne, and this is That's What I Call Marketing, a podcast where you'll hear from the leading lights in the marketing world and listen to their unique insights. Today, I'm joined live from London by Karen Martin, CEO of BBH. Yes, that BBH. As you know, Karen Martin is a prominent figure in the advertising and marketing industry. Her leadership at BBH showcases the depth of experience and strategic vision she has. Karen started her marketing career at McConnell's here in Dublin before heading off to Australia, where she worked with every beer brand that that market had in renowned agencies BMF and Host, where she was the MD. And then Karen came back to London and now as CEO of BBH, she has been instrumental in steering BBH London to continue to produce groundbreaking work for a diverse range of clients. Karen's commitment to creative excellence and strategic insight has ensured that the agency not only delivers compelling and effective campaigns, but also builds strong, enduring relationships. Karen is known for a commitment to diversity and inclusion within the industry. And yes, we touch on all of this and so much more in today's episode. From client agency relationships, the importance of great work, effectiveness, curiosity, yes, my pet topic, diversity in the industry and the culture at BBH, as well as plans for BBH Dublin and our shared ambition to turn Ireland into the creative hotspot by 2027. And how we're going to make Rita laugh. Don't forget to subscribe to That's What I Call Marketing wherever you are listening or watching. And of course, you can rate the show if you enjoyed it. If we can help you with growth through marketing, visit That's What I Call Marketing.com and see how we can help. Today's episode of That's What I Call Marketing is brought to you by The Indie List, Ireland's leader for freelance marketing, creative and digital talent. The Indie List provides easy access to hundreds of highly experienced and vetted experts across the marketing services business quickly and cost effectively. You can check out their full range of services at indielist.ie. Karen, thanks a million for joining me on That's What I Call Marketing. Really great to have you here. Brilliant to be here. Thank you for having me. Listen, before we start, anyone who's listening or watching who may not know who Karen Martin is, can you give me just a brief introduction? Yes. So I am Karen Martin, as you just said. And I am the CEO of BBH in London and Dublin. Um, I've been at BBH now for almost eight years, um, CEO for the past three, and opened BBH Dublin um, last May. Before that, I spent 14 years in Australia um, working on basically every single beer brand imagined, which was fabulous. And before that, I started my career in McConnell's um, oh, back wow. in 2001. Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. I remember McConnell's well. Um, yeah. I have to ask you, and we, we'll get into this in a bit more detail, but like you, you're at the helm of an iconic agency. I mean, how does that, what does that feel like? Do you pinch yourself? Absolutely. I mean, it's a mix of like, how have I ended up here? And, uh, and, and that can happen quite a lot. And this is absolutely amazing. And, and I'm very privileged to, yeah. to, to get here. Right? I worked very hard, uh, very, very hard to do it. And, um, and BBH is like the reason I got into advertising, like because I just remember the Nick Heyman laundress ads going like blew my mind yeah. of like this was the caliber of creativity for an ad, you know, and everyone, all my friends, we all wore Levi's. I do think as a result of that advertising campaign. And what I used to say is I'm either going to marry Nick Heyman <laughs> or I'm going to get into advertising. And I got into advertising, so I won. You uh, absolutely. Do you know really funny? So this morning, um, I was I was telling my ten year old that I was meeting you. I was explaining to him again. He's ten, so I don't know what I was expecting him to. But I was I I put on the laundrette ad. I was like, she yeah. worked with this agency that made this ad, and his friend was here because we were dropping him to school. And I was like, like Levi's were in trouble, and this like you know turned it around, and you know people didn't really wear boxer shorts. You know they were like you know. Oh, they did so much for, and probably laundrettes as well. Yeah. yeah it's funny, we still we still look at it every every so often to just go, the masterpiece that was, and all the other yeah. guys that, that came out of it. And actually, everything at BBH was just amazing. And, and sometimes when we hear from the founders, and they often come in and talk to us, you're kind of, even the stuff that we probably wouldn't be as familiar with is still epic. So you're you're so the, to answer your question, what's it like? So it's kind of the legacy and the responsibility is enormous, but you kind of have to 
keep that in the back of your head because that kind of looking back is not good for anybody. It's not good for people's careers, yeah. for people who work here. You have to look forward, but realize that you have a very precious legacy and you have to do all you can to um, keep the BBH name up and zagging and doing all the work that we love. So, yeah, it's it, look forward, but, you know, respect the past and hold it close. Yeah, it's kind of like it's, it's standing on the shoulders. Right. And that's a great thing. You know, it's not kind of holding you back. Um, you touched on wanting to get into advertising. You went yeah. to you went to DIT. So was it always it something? Is, yeah. I went to the College of Marketing and Design, which was up Mount in Mount Square, Square, yeah. Which was actually like a small ad agency when you think about it, because it had marketing people and it had art, visual. It was like it was a big uh, arts degree up there as well. And then meat marketing, which, which still to this day, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand the combination, but we were all there. So actually it was like a, like a mini ad agency. So I was there for four years. And then, of course, you got your degree from Trinity at that stage. I don't know if you still do. Um, and I, lo- I loved, I loved Mentor Square. It was absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, but I, I wanted to work in advertising. I knew I always wanted to work in advertising. I wanted to be an actress. And then I was obviously terrible at that. <laughs> and then just thought I'd just go and, 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 and go to advertising, which is quite funny because my mother, despite, you know, having a fairly successful career will often go, we in that, and, and were you in the ads? And I go, no. And she go, oh, next time. And you're like, okay. So I feel like I'm always disappointing them that I've never managed to get myself in an ad. Uh, I don't want to. But yeah. it's uh, Maybe I have to to impress her. Maybe I have to. The, the DITs are amazing. So I was around the corner in Colorado Street. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah and like, like that. You're welcome. Yeah. That was a good there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. The Airways. I don't know if that was there. Yeah. It was a tiny yeah, little place. Yeah. Yeah, it was mental. <laughs> Good term. But they were great colleges because, um, and, you know, I still talked to Alex Gibson. He was one of my lecturers in Cal Brewer Street. Yeah. And they, I, what I loved about them was they were, like, they were small in communities. And like you say, like, it felt like you were part, like, we felt like we were in, maybe not a hotel, but like, you know, we were in kitchens yeah. and stuff like that. They did a brilliant job, like, I think, DIT. Yeah. And then we, we got a degree from Trinity. So I'm. Yeah, I'm, I know. I know, which is, which is amazing, which, you know. Because sounds well on the CV. I know I'm a scientist from Trinity. No one way out. I'm a marketer from Trinity. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the the move to Australia was that like kind of a well, we'll go for a year and see what happens and yeah, the usual. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like a passage. Was it was like everybody did it, but I I spent two and a half years in McConnell's, which I loved, and that was brilliant because that was kind of my introduction into the world, and then. You know, it was like, well, I have to go to Australia. So I did. Um, and I, you know, I, I was there about like three months, even less. And I was like, this place is brilliant. There's a beach. You can actually get out of the water. Like it was very basic stuff. So instead of like doing this massive traveling thing, which was what I was wanted, was meant to do. I went, oh, I know I'm going to get a job and be, you know, so I got it, went to Leo Burnett there um, for my first job in wow. Australia. And then settled quite quickly, actually, um, I, and worked on Kellogg's because I worked in Kellogg's on um, um, Connell's. It was like a home from home. OK. But it's great. I, I was delighted I did that because then that secured. And then I got into another, went to BMF, which is an amazing agency, startup culture, did incredible work and then host. And then eventually decided to come kind of home. And you were talking about some of the work you did in, in host. You, you said you worked on a lot of alcohol, beer brands. Yeah, BMF. Uh, oh, BMF. I worked, uh, it was like, uh, you know, Forex Gold, Tui's New, Tui's Extra Dry, West End Draft, James Squires, like pretty much. Uh, I, I don't know what it was about me, but <laughs> I was on every single. What would be my exit? Uh, I just loved it. And obviously they were just making epic, amazing beer commercials, you know, so you're, it's kind of, that's the dream account, isn't it? So I worked in a few yeah. others, but, and then when I went to host, I ended up, bringing some of those clients in the legal time frame over with me as well. So, yeah, a, a big, big passion, passion area for me. The good times, basically. Um, but, you know, you learn an awful lot. And it's like working on catalogs. If you start off your career, you learn the basics of marketing and how that function yeah. works, which is good because advertising, you tend to just be thrown in at the deep end. I think we're better now. I hope we're better now with training people and explaining how it all works. But I do remember there being an excellent training program. I think suddenly you're in a meeting going, oh, right, okay, I've heard this. Whereas um, on a client like that, who are quite stringent of very good marketing practices, like a Unilever, 
you learn loads. Yeah. So I always encourage anyone starting off their career to get on things like that because it gives you a good a good um, explanation as to how it all works. And then you understand your clients and, you know, the things that they have to go through and all the rest of it, rather than being on very hectic, small scale projects. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I yeah, I, I did a lot of work with the likes of O2 and, I, you know, I didn't think I realized at the time, you know, like, VCCP were coming over and kind of the brand guardians and yeah. you know, Ben and you know, oh, do then you know, these guys, the bubbles and you know, like all the, yeah. but it was all the good, stuff, all the proper stuff we needed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when I was at McConnell's because in the, in London, they had JWT and Leo Burnett as their agencies for the different brands. I used to like come over and do my meetings because I'd have to spend like probably a day a month and conveniently, go on a Friday um, when people used to go into the office on Friday and then you'd kind of you'd get your Friday immersed in two agencies which is brilliant because I just think the scale and the thinking and the amount of like brains around was great exposure as well even though I wasn't working I was still working in Dublin yeah. but like, I was getting that experience which I think is really important to just get as much in uh, as much opportunity to learn you just have to go in take it all because um agencies are so different depending on size culture clients etc yeah yeah and it gives you that like it's that i talk a lot about it uh, you know this people that kind of innate curiosity and, and really looking for that you know and i think this is the business if you're curious this yeah. is the business to be in and if you're not maybe it's not <laughs> Absolutely. Ab- absolutely. And, and, and you have to be in a room and pretend you don't, you don't know everything because you don't. And it's like people love pitches, right? Because you can suddenly, you know, get onto a category or a brand that you knew nothing about three days mm. ago. And then three days you're an expert. And at the excitement of that and throwing yourself into something new, I think us ad people need that all the time because you have to be innately curious, ask those questions and assume you just don't know. Because somebody will come up with a brilliant answer that you haven't thought of, um, and you got to allow that process to happen. Yeah, yeah, and it is like it is a real, I think, an advantage. Like there's there's challenges obviously with agency, but a huge advantage of an agency is the diversity of the work that you get to do. You get to work on a ton of different things and yeah. embed yourself in it and really understand it and, and go, as you say, deep really, really quickly. Yeah, it's the best bit about it. Like yeah, it's like pitching it's exciting. Kind of get out of your day to day. I love pitching. Do you still love pitching? Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. That, that's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Like that, you know, yeah. that you're kind of, oh, no, got another pitch. <laughs> no, no. I, and it's the adrenaline from, I love them. But I, I mean, I, I, I love this industry. Like I, you know, <laughs> knew, I was actually at, at friends for dinner and the, the usual conversation, if you, you could do any job now, what would you do? And everybody was, you know, coming up with brilliant suggestions. And I was like, I'd do this. And they were like, what? I was like, God, am I really like lacking ambition or imagination? But um, no, I love it. Like I absolutely yeah. love it for all those reasons. It's, it's fun. And, and the client relationships and, and the more, you know, the tighter and closer your client relationships, the more you learn about their business. So you're constantly learning. Like Tesco is one of our biggest. Yeah. Um, and obviously uh, we have Tesco Ireland. I just find their business fascinating. Like, uh, fascinating. Just serving the nation, stores up and down the country, like all the logistics, all the stuff that they can do. I'm just always amazed by it um, and, and I think that's you know you've got to be interested in your client's business as well because then you'll find those problems and that's where you know you'll find the brilliant creative answers to it so yeah I, I, I did want to ask you about the kind of the client agency relationship I was at an event maybe a couple of months ago in, in Dublin and it was kind of like a, a CMO survey and you know one of the things that came up was ah oh, the client agency relationship you know it 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 needs to be better. And I, there was no, there was nothing kind of landed on what needs to be better, but this seems yeah. to be a perpetual thing that it can be better. And, you know, how can it be better? And there's a gap in understanding of what each other does. Do you, do you still think that exists or is, or, or not? It can. I think it's, it's a convenient thing when everybody complains about each other. I think there's probably a bigger problem there, to be honest. And I think now what is happening is the tenure of a CMO is a lot shorter um, and as a result, you don't tend to create those relationships over time. And some people don't, and that can go both sides, by the way, don't value or don't put enough time into the importance of a relationship. It's like any relationship in your yeah. life. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And, you know, for all the account people and creatives and strats here, I'm like, you 
be in your client offices, walk the halls, because that's where you're going to pick up a brief, brief, an amazing creative opportunity because you're in there and you understand the business. And what client doesn't love proactivity? You know, it's like, yeah. it's like a new romance, you know, it's all fun and lovely in the beginning. And then, you know, the, the year set in and that all fades away. And you know what? Someone else is more interesting, like another ad agency and they're proactive and giving you stuff and yeah. they like that. It is no different. Um, and I've great client relationships. Like I'm, you know, because you care, you're very passionate about their business and you understand what they need. I think sometimes agencies don't listen and like keep on presenting work, but it's not answering their business problem. What's worrying them? What's keeping them up at night? Yeah. What's going to make them look good? What's going to help them succeed in their career? Understand all of that stuff. Try and know their business better than them, which, you know, good account people do that. And then that gives you the license to, you know, have a great conversation about work because it's coming from a place of understanding and empathy. Um, and that's that's just, and, and I like people. Um, so it's a start. And clients are people too. So yeah. uh, it's that's that, that's what I love. But with that, you, you have got to invest time in it too. And I, you know, I hear that, you know, clients are they're kind of moaning on both sides. I think you have to look at yourself and go, well, what am I not doing? And sit down with your clients and have an honest conversation of this relationship could be a lot better. And I don't yeah. think there's enough of that. I don't think there's enough of that. That's interesting. So even that proactive piece of saying, oh, like, are we, you know, is everything okay? Like, it's actually yeah. a fair question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, all the times when I've known something, I feel instinctively feel something's not right. Um, maybe because I'm not directly related to something, but what I'm hearing from a team. And sure enough, like it comes to a pitch or not maybe that drastic, but there's something going on. So at the end of the day, you've got to trust your, trust your instincts on what is a good partnership and if that changes and yeah, but you've got to be, you've got to call it. And I think probably people aren't honest enough. Um, I'm worried about confrontation. I'm perhaps worried about, you know, causing more strain to a relationship. Yeah. But nip it in the bud, get in there, sort it out and try and fix it to make it better. And you said something there, which I, I find interesting and, and, and very true is part of I don't think it's the job but like clients want to be successful in their careers and their success and your success can kind of work together right so if, you know I, I think that's something that we we can often shy away from is actually yeah. like people want to be and you know in the most part want to be successful and want to be doing good stuff stuff and want to be seen by their senior leadership as you know growing yeah. the business because you know what I mean and so yeah. actually understanding their even their personal ambition is okay. Absolutely, 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 and and often we're here to make our clients famous, and you know if you do that now that's if they want fame, but like fame through the work or recognition because you know it's good for the CV and if and it's good for their career somewhere, and also it tells a long term story like you know uh, our, our Tesco relationship, for example, in the UK. You know I worked with one of many of those clients for like seven plus years, and that is you know that's long, but because I think this, obviously it's such an amazing business that there's so many places yeah. to grow. But the strength of those relationships, and, you know, we've gotten it wrong. We both have plenty of times, but the putting the hand up and going, we messed that up or, and vice versa is, is, is so important. And then understand what they want to get out of their career and help them. Because there's, there's something in it for everybody, if that's the case. You can tell a great effect on a story, create a story, et cetera, if you do that. And they understand your motivations as well. So, yeah, chat, yeah. get it all out there. Exactly. And, and I think, again, the words, I think we we dance around a bit, you know, like fame is OK, you know, like the, all these things are OK. It's just, you know, we exactly. we tend to kind of shy away from the, the tough conversations. You, yeah. you talked there a bit about, you know, work, great work and, and effectiveness. And look, we started off by talking about BBH and, you know, great work is kind of how it's been founded. And, and you've talked about continuing that and continuing to make sure you do great work. How do you set about doing that? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing is like everyone goes, we're going to do great work. And everyone goes, yeah, but do we know what great work is? So um, you have to be clear on what, what good looks like. So we've done, you know, BBH is obviously it's built on creativity. So it's ambitions and desires are very high in that regard. But you just need to make sure that you've all got the same taste or what you understand a great idea to be. So we've done a lot, an awful lot, actually, in the past year or so going, this is what great looks like. And actually, this is how you get there. So we've broken into like five steps, you know, and it is things like start great, like the brief, 
you know, how are you briefing people? How are you engaging people in it? Is it interesting proposition? Have you found a zag? Because obviously we look for difference and yeah. everything, not difference for different sake, but difference to stand out in a cluttered market or a category. Spending like forensically mining the company history because often you find an amazing truth deep in deep in a brand's past. Yeah. Um, and do you understand insight? Like, how, what do we know about people? You can't just say, you know, people with the mouth. You have to have a lot more information on your audience because we're seeing so much subsections work arrive now. And that's really cool because you're speaking to people. Is it inclusive? Do you understand your audience? And, and so much time in the brief. And also to push back in the client brief if it's mm. not clear. The business problem isn't clear. Because if you don't start great, you're not going to end great. Um, and then obviously the creative process, leaving enough time. You know, we don't have to have a meeting every day. It's grand. Just leave people to think, et cetera. Think, and, yeah. and, and protecting that. And these are the these are the tough conversations to have with clients going, I will protect my team's time so that they give you the best work. Because often we all know we've been in those creative presentations where the first round of work, you have to go through the motions of that and then you get to the good stuff. Allow that time. And um, we talk about selling great. Um we said to you, we're not here to share ideas. If you think of how, you know, I remember my early account management careers, it was like, you'd go out and be like, don't come back until you sell that idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And now there's a bit of like, we went and we shared the work and you're like, we don't share yeah. it, you're selling. So getting comfortable with the fact that we are selling all the time. Well, you're selling all the time anyway, but in particularly, it's, you're not having a good meeting, you're there to sell the work. Mm. Um, but you have to have something brilliant enough and then, you know, ending great, making sure you PR it and all the rest of it and getting into that again, because we just, for many of us, we just assume that everybody knows, but it feels like COVID took years out of people's learning and training. So investing in all that again and reminding people that getting to great work is really, 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 really hard, really hard yes. because yeah. we'd be all doing it all the time yeah. and it takes care and, you know, Having your boundaries, we've all seen it with, with creative ideas where, you know, oh, just make this change, make this change before you end up with something that's just not really anything. Like be very clear on what you will say, what you're prepared to move on and what you're not prepared to move on and have firm boundaries because I think that's where everyone starts off brilliantly and ends up with something. Oh, I don't know what happened. It was that one piece of feedback that actually threw it over the edge. We've all been there, right? So yeah, yeah. all of that stuff. And, and I know it's, basic but it's been forgotten so it's a recommitment to the things that will get you to great um, and that's been really important and then we have you know a wall of work that we believe to be excellent uh, it might be it might take us two years to sell that work in but we're going to do it and to to just I guess get everybody thinking of the potential of huge ideas and and if they're not going to be sold in this month we'll maybe in six months time and 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 that's what great looks like and do that with your clients as well so I was going to ask, I want to just quickly ask about the wall of work. Is that work that you've created off the back of a brief and you think, you know, is is right for client X, but they're not ready or they're not there yet? Yeah, so it's it's a, an array of different things that might be for companies that don't even exist yet or okay. um, existing clients or future clients, clients, businesses we'd like to go after. And it is born from, like, it'll be a creative idea that a team will come up with. And then Alex and Helen, who's our CCO and ECD, they look at it and go, that's the one we'll talk about it. We'll go, right. And then you get the whole agency behind it, right? You get everybody going, I really want us to sell that in. So it's not just an individual pursuit. The agency gets behind it and backs it. Um, And I don't know if you've seen work recently that we did for Sex After Cancer, which was um, for Girls Versus Cancer charity, which... That took two years to get out into the world. Um, and wow. it has caused, as you would expect, different difference of opinions. Um, but it's a topic that's not talked about. And we were bringing um, our client Laura's story to life and all these women's stories to life. And that took two years. So don't give up so easily either. Wow. I, and I, I had that to talk to you about. I mean, that work is powerful, like powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and did that yeah. that started from, you know, in the agency, someone saying we should be doing something to talk about this, or had they come to you? We had come up with an idea for basically the fact that when women get diagnosed with cancer, and often, you know, you're you're, you're not to, you're not you're not allowed to talk about you know your sex life or intimacy or anything. It's like you know, 
you're there to live or you're, you know, you're lucky to be alive kind of thing. And it's the one topic that isn't discussed. Um, and it, everything else is, has been discussed to a certain degree. And it's not for everybody because people go, I don't want that, you know. But for many yep. women, it's like, it's just not a topic. And it's like, you know, I want to get back to myself. I want to feel myself again. Um, and yeah, so we had this idea and we found Girls vs. Cancer to work with. Um, she had been working on this, her own charity and her own, her own cause. We just came together and found a way to bring it to life. And it's it's excellent because... You know, it was an all-female team. It, you know, the shoot was very, it was, you know, there's a, an intimacy coordinator there, only females on set, clone set. And these these women, that was them telling their stories. They're real. They were all real. So it's it's amazing. Not for everybody, but I'm incredibly proud of it. And I'm delighted that we stayed with it and stuck with it yeah. to make it. Because now it's out there and now it's a topic of conversation, you know. Which is the, yeah, I mean, that's like, even as you say, if some people are like, not for me, it's a t- it's a conversation that then you know can be had at least for for those that are that are there. When when we're talking there, you talked a bit about you know protecting, I, I guess the the creative process and and protecting the the time. Yeah. How do you how do you manage that? Because I know clearly with like agencies and clients, there's always a bit of a oh the hours thing. <laughs> like how how do you manage that with? Because you know, the time is so important, like creative people need time and space to to yeah. think, you know, you're not going to come up with a good idea in two hours and then another good idea in another no. two hours. Like it's just, that's a, no. that's yeah. a factory. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We're not that. Uh, comes back to client relationships, you know. Yeah. And and the hours point is we, our, biz, our industry makes it a huge impact on clients' business. I I have effectiveness papers in this agency to prove it again and again. The IPA Effectiveness Agency yeah. of the Year for four years. Uh, we've got a long-term effectiveness for AOD for the 41-year relationship, which proves the investment into marketing. You know, the return on it is huge. I'm also chair of the IPA Effectiveness Leadership Group. So I see the impact that marketing has yeah. on clients' business. And we are worth it and we are worth uh, fighting for it to be paid appropriately and fairly. The problem is agencies all go in and discount against each other. That is a race to the bottom that we don't participate in. Right. Protect your people, protect their value, pay them, pay people well for their, for their skills and their ability. Because what we do is hard and we're the ones that bring that down, you know. Yes, you're going to get into a battle of procurement. Defend, defend, defend why you are worth the investment. And then do that for the time as well. There will be situations whereby you're going to have mass panic and you have to get something out. That's grand. We can all yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. That is not the way of working. You will not get to great if that's your way of working. Teams are tired. You know, you can't just, it's, as you say, it's not a factory. And you need to protect that. And that's that's our job. As a, I'm a account person through and through. But I see that as when I was, you know, in the, in the, and still now, that is my job to protect that term. And it's their job to give me a bloody brilliant idea. And we all do <laughs> Yeah, 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 we all do it. But I remember, um, you may know Bren O'Flaherty. I worked with him. Great creative guy. And Bren used to kind of, he'd disappear and he'd be mm. gone, he'd be, like be on a train, just going to hold them back. And then he'd come yeah. back and he'd go, I have it. Like he just, yeah. you know what I mean? And it, but that was that. It was my first experience of it kind of going, that just freedom to to think yeah. with where it, the magic. But we all think, when you think about it, we all have our best ideas when we're not under pressure. Like if you're out walking in the morning, you're going, oh, I should do this. Mm. Yeah, I know. And, and having that time to do that because, uh, and then allowing that be crafted. The craft is, execution is so critical because it's the difference between good and great. And, and, and I will say, because my, Production friends would um, kill me for not saying, make sure you leave time production. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're going to do, do it well, because you can, you can tell, I watch stuff, I see stuff and you go, oh God, that would have been incredible if the craft was just that bit more. Right. And I feel, yeah, I feel like the craft and some things just, just lets it down for what was a brilliant idea. So, so yeah. with all the IPA effectiveness stuff that you have, and I've seen it, you know, on the side as well, like it's like it's there, it's front and center, as you say, you you have stacks of evidence. Mm. How come we're still? How come that conversation is still a conversation that, that you 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 need to have? Is it is it coming from 
Is it coming from procurement, CFOs? Like, I'm not saying they're the problem, but like, where is the conversation being had? Well, if you are facing into a very challenging year and you've mm-hmm. promised no words to the city, whatever, uh, and you might have to, you know, cut costs or whatever, we're an easy thing to cut because media, you can cut and you can, yeah. you know, and similarly, you can go down tools on stuff. So we are an easy thing to put money back into the business. Inevitably, that catches up with you because you start to see your consideration dropping or your awareness dropping, all the, you know, Mm -hmm. brand measurements. And then suddenly it's a, right, let's get that back in. Uh, And it's like, it's exhausting that we're still having the conversation. It's trying to to connect the two. And actually, um, Ken Murphy, who's the group CEO of Tesco, uh, gave an interview to Marketing Week is that essentially said he sees marketing as an investment, not a cost. So that's the group CEO of Tesco saying that. And I'd imagine that all CEOs probably feel the same way. It's just often they're not brought in enough uh, to the business problems or what actually marketing can do, that marketing is an investment and shouldn't be something that you switch off the minute you need to save money. And I think we are an easy way to do that. Uh, because you can get access to the cash quite quickly. Cash quickly yeah. Versus you can't with people, if you know people in the business, et cetera. So I, I, I think, I think when you um, read these effectiveness papers, which you know everyone should, because it prove in our industry everyone should know them because it proves mm-hmm. the investment out. Uh, and share even if they're not yours, share them with your clients so they can see that because then they can prove to their board yeah. why it's an investment. Often this information is all kept. Econometrics helps a bit, actually, because econometrics is a language that CFOs understand. And, you know, CFOs are critical decision makers. Once they have all of the right tools, then they can make decisions yeah. as to where the spend is. I just feel that maybe that's not being shared enough um, for for it to not get the investment that it needs. It'll be an ongoing thing, but I, I like to think that a lot of our clients are lucky to say that they feel that way, that it is an investment. Are you having, like, are they, you're having those, you're in with the CEOs, like you're talking to them about this stuff. Like, you you know, you're, are you in the room with them? Not all, but some, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that is, like, it is important as you say that they're brought in and not just yeah. for the CMO, but like have a relationship with, with the agency, yeah. you know, I think that can be... Really? What's keeping you awake at night? What are you worried about? Because fundamentally, there will be a creative solve to all of these things. And that's why, you know, that's why I absolutely love this business because solving business problems is what we do. And have been yeah. outside of something, we can give perspective. And once you once you give any creative a proper problem to solve, they're amazing. If it's just very, you know, if there's nothing tangible in a proposition, it's, it's hard to write to that stuff. So... Creatives love, and people think that creatives don't, you know, they're sitting up there, you know, in their creative zone. They're what is interested in the business as anybody else, because that's where they see the gems, the, the opportunities. So, yeah, I feel I feel like we need to get over that kind of stuff, make sure all the right people are in the room and candidly sharing where the issues are and then allow the creative solve it because they will. Yeah, it's like, a, I, I think you mentioned earlier on, like the, the walking the halls, you know, like just physically, whether it's in the store, whether it's in the head office, whatever, because yeah. that just, you know, it's like it's anything you hear, you overhear things. You're like, oh, yeah. wow, this is incredible. Your point about the IPA effectiveness work, I think, is really important. And people may not be able to afford econometrics and, and stuff, yeah. but reading the pay studies is is so valuable. Absolutely. And they're all available post the event. You know, they're 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 available to read. And, and I know IAPI is very connected to IPA. So, yeah. They're as available in Ireland as they are here, but they are, they just prove, prove a case, prove the point, the importance of an insight, a good brief um, and showing the evidence of it. And it kind of does it for us, you know what I mean? You kind of go, have a read of that. Yeah. And then, but then, yeah. And there's all, there'll be something that's relative enough to your category, I think in there, because we, well, we're a bit different. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, you know. yeah, well, yeah, well it, it, it will be there. It will exist in some, <laughs> in some shape or form. If you'll find something that relates to it, for sure. You are listening to That's What I Call Marketing, a partnership with The Indie List, where you will find experienced and vetted marketing talent, people like me, and also people who design and people who write. You get the idea. Check out theindielist.ie. You are listening to That's What I Call Marketing. Do you need help growing your business through marketing? Well, check out our services at that'swhaticallmarketing.com. Get in touch today and see how we can help. 
Uh, you've, you've a great sign behind you there. Work hard, be nice to people. And I know you care a lot about culture and, you know, belief in building a culture of kindness. When you, when you joined BBH, was that something that you really wanted to focus on? I think, um, yeah. I mean, yes, I, I think you get more out of people if you're good to them. I think, I think, I just think that is the case. And, and I like to think, you know, leading with empathy is really important and putting yourself in other people's positions, really important. And, but I have, will have, you know, in my role, I do have to make very tough decisions and I'll have to act on behalf of what's right for business. And sometimes that yeah. might not be seen as very kind, but as so long as you do it with the right care and compassion, I think that's inevitable. And I remember, you know, the one piece of advice that I always pass on uh, as much as I use myself is and um, be hard on the topic and be soft on the person. Because if you do that, you might have to deliver the toughest news, but if you do it out of, you know, make sure you're taking into account someone's feelings or how they're going to receive that news and make that a very soft experience, but make your topic be understood and clear. I think people generally tend to appreciate the honesty and the directness. And I'm very honest. If I don't think something is good or right, I don't wait for him to leave the room. I'll say it in there. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I believe in directness. I believe in honesty because I think I just don't understand people who don't say what they think. I feel like we're just time wasting. And in terms of a culture, celebrating things, you know, like we are great at going out and celebrating here. It's really important because you might, you know, Used to be you do a pitch and then, you know, you take a day off to recover. Now we do a pitch and walk back into another meeting, you know, yeah. to make sure you have time to recuperate, recover and celebrate and celebrate all the things and celebrate your people and promote them and look after them and, you know, make sure that work is a really good place to be for their career. You know, you don't want to just like free muffins and make crap work. <laughs> it's like, you know, free muffins and brilliant work. But, you know, there, there's an importance so people feel to get more out of their, 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 their life at work if the agency is on the up and the work is really good that they're doing. So you create that environment um, and just be compassionate, you know. People, you don't know what's going on in anyone's life. So, and if you do and you understand that, well, then make sure you treat that respectfully and carefully. Yeah, and I think that, like, your point about, maybe, you know, business decisions, you know, that business decisions have to be made, yeah. you know. And I, I, I've been at the, the end of one recently and, but I think it's how it gets handled. Yes, absolutely. You know, it, it, I, I think then you can, you can walk away from it going, well, I didn't, I didn't want this to happen. Yeah. But it happened and they, they dealt with it beautifully and brilliantly and I feel I want nothing but success then. You know what I mean? Like it's, a, it's like a, a good breakup. Yeah, no, but like it, it's part of the industry. It's yeah. being an inevitability. But it's how you make people feel and that. Like I think usually people can accept a situation or a scenario or the fact, but it's how you've treated somebody is the bit that will remain. You know, that's the yeah. bit that you'll think about. And it's really important to get that right. Um, and yeah. And, and I've also, we've all been on the receiving end of really bad bosses, haven't we? That you go, well, I'm never going to be like that. <laughs> 100%. Yes. <laughs> Had my fair few and, uh, you know, it kind of makes you the leader. It's terrible, isn't it? We learn more from the bad leaders than you do the good ones. Uh, but yeah. I, I agree. I, I completely agree. You get so much out of the, that is not the way I ever want to be, no. you know, and, and certainly I've had the same experience. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it could be like, I love feedback or I love to be told if it was like, no, Karen, you could have done that better. I'm like, great. How? Because I won't want to make a mistake again if I messed something up or if I handled a situation badly. I'd like to know. Um, and that's what I mean about complete honesty and, and, and directness. I think we all owe that to each other in the workplace. How do you get to that? Because that, that, is, a, that, that is a hard culture to have of, of real, I guess, empathetic honesty. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, we, we're doing quite a bit of training on managing different right. conversations, actually, because I think people think to give somebody bad feedback. I mean, no one likes confrontation. Well, some people do, but most people don't like confrontation and it's sort of just easier to not give feedback, but then maybe, you know, not put somebody on a project for that reason rather than tell them. Mm -hmm. If they think that you're mad and they massively disagree with this, that's, that's another issue. More mm -hmm. important than not, people really value it and go, okay, but give constructive feedback. Don't just go, that was awful. 
it was awful because, well, hopefully you don't have to say that to anyone. Actually, never say that to anybody. Don't take that. I say, oh, that wasn't particularly good, was it? Um, but you, you, you know, be, be, be clear on what it is and what you would suggest maybe to do better the next time. And this is what you should think about. So everyone goes, oh, okay, 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 grand. Okay, I get it. Rather than that was really bad and I'm not going to give you any reasons why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go and what was it? Um, yeah. But, but people don't like to do that. But, you know, in this industry, you get promoted quite frequently. You get teens and then you're not really taught how to manage people. And managing people yeah. is not you know, being there and passing on information. You're managing somebody's career. So you owe it to them to give them feedback. Yeah. I wanted to touch on um, just diversity, diversity in the industry. And I, I know you brought in, I forget this right, I'm reading it here, so I don't get it wrong. The unmistakables. Yeah. Is that to lead training on cultural nuances? I'd love to talk a bit about yeah, that. Yeah, the unmistakables are brilliant. And we partnered with them in 2020 when, you know, the horrendous George Floyd uh, situation and right. everybody was having a moment of going, right, we've got a lot of reflecting to do um, and we all need to do that. And, and the, the worst thing that people do is, you know, at the time, like you go to all your black colleagues to go, how do we solve this? And they're like, your, your problem, not really mine. And you're like, mm. no, we're grieving, we're hurting. We're, and you're like, you're absolutely right. And so we brought in the unmistakables to help us um, understand where our weak spots were. And they helped us in loads of things. And then it was like, well, what can we actually do together? It's like, well, we as an industry can make sure we have to have our, you know, our, our right um, point of view on what we want BBH to be like, how people feel. It's inclusive. It's welcoming. You can be yourself here. It's like being at home. You're not uncomfortable. You can express yourself, all that type of stuff. Watching out for microaggressions and stuff, which have been going on for years. Being able to give people the tools to call that out when it happens and all that stuff we right. put in place to make sure that's there, that you can defend yourself. If you're in a situation where it made you feel really uncomfortable, that you know that you can talk to somebody and that it's unacceptable and that we won't have that here. But, right. but what the other difference we can make is we make so much work for so many brands. We can make sure that the work that we put out is inclusive and it helps people feel seen and that they're seen. And that I recognize that that looks like my family, that looks like my family makeup, that it's very much like my culture. And so what we did was we did three um workshops uh, where we brought in speakers and we got creative teams and their account people and strats to go and work on different topics. So disability, um, we focused on Ramadan. Uh, so, so, and they would go away and work on proactive briefs for their clients. And then we went back and we presented these to our clients and to the whole agents to see what yeah. real inclusive work looks like. It was brilliant. It was such a massive learning for everyone, but it was like, we'll make sure that BBH is a is a good place to be for everybody. But what we, and then that's on us, but what we can do collectively, the more we understand that is we can put it, work out there that helps people feel accepted, seen, part of their community. And it was brilliant. And we continue to work with them. We did their Ramadan work with them with Tesco. They're amazing partners. Um, and uh, Asad is fabulous. And I recommend anyone working with them because they're, they're really, really good. In terms of diversity of suppliers you work with and creators, are you, are you kind of going about trying to make sure that's, yeah. yeah. So that we, you know, the triple bid process, we always make sure that we have a diverse um, director list because actually it was probably one of the, 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 the biggest issues of, you know, you look at a reel of somebody and the more finished a reel is, the more likely you are to use them. That's fine. They've, you know, that's their career, but getting access or getting into the industry and reel is never going to be good enough. So how can yeah. you, yeah. in the, in the junior stages and, and maybe don't have the same privilege, et cetera. So you have to make it a choice and give people a chance. So we did that in the, and we, we did that very early, Joe, about three years ago. We also do things like Consigned, which starts out at BBH. And now I'm, it, it's delighted because it went to all other agencies. It was producers in the department here wanted to showcase young and upcoming talent so that they get, they were given a chance. So all their work would be displayed in the agency and we'd invite agencies all over town to come and have a look at it so that this, this young talent, uh, diverse talent, were given an opportunity. And then 
the team at the time say, can we just not make this a BBH thing? Can we actually make this a, an industry thing? Like go for it because we all have to change it together. Yeah. And now all the, all the agencies do and it's brilliant. And it's been going three, four years now. Um, and then obviously the barn, which uh, we run here, which is a paid for tr- nine months of training in creative. Oh, wow. BH. Yeah. So that, that was, uh, it was set up by, uh, Tony Cullingham, whom uh, was the tutor and you know, at Watford University, where most creatives come from in the UK, to be honest. And he left that and he came here and he ran it for us for two years. And he passed away um, in September this year. Uh, we were devastated. But he had picked his students. So we uh, right. honoured it. And Nick Gill, who's one of the great CDs and the former ACD of BBH, an absolute brilliant human. We asked him, would he do it? And he stepped in. So Barnes started no last week. Yeah, so they started last week. And um, yeah. That's incredible. Incre- and, you know, getting, just getting people in and giving them an opportunity of kind of being in an agency where that may not have existed before is like phenomenal, isn't it? They're all up there at the moment. They're all in every day. They're just so keen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I go, come down, like, come down and, like, talk to everybody because we're, you know, we're desperate for some newness as well and, with like, yeah. optimism and youth. Come and bring it down. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, they're great. And that's really exciting. So we do an awful lot to make sure we're bringing in um, diversity and giving people the opportunity because, you know, we can get on to class another day, but like there is a, there yep. is a mon, bit of a monotype in advertising that is finally changing, which is brilliant. Yeah, it's, uh, look, there is, and uh, you know, you even mentioned there, like a lot of our people come from one college, you know, like no, it's, absolutely. It's, it's the same, absolutely. you know, everywhere. So I don't really think you need a, a, a degree to work in advertising. I think you just have to understand people. Yeah, l- listen, I, my, Degrees in hospitality. No, you do. <laughs> and look no. at me now. Oh, yeah. Look at you now. Um, you can tell. Look at you now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, listen, I want to get on to talking about Ireland and yes. and opening up over here. Yes. Um, what, like, I guess, how did, it, how did it come about? Was that a, like, was it a thing for you? You were kind of going, I'm going to open an office so my mom knows what I do. Oh, no, I was like, oh, this is where it starts going. So, okay, so we've won in Shanghai, Singapore, India, New York, LA, Stockholm, Ireland. And they were like, no, no, this is, this is eight years ago. So it's a running joke of like, so BBH Dublin? And I was like, no. And then, and then uh, we start. you know, we obviously work with Tesco here and then there was an opportunity to work with Tesco in Ireland and I was like right well let's open a Dublin agency but what was what was very clear from the outset we needed to be a BBH agency so the same principles the same belief in creativity all the all the crafts all the all the values to stay true um, and do that in Ireland because I mean I obviously love Ireland it's brilliant mm. it's uh, some of the funniest people the best storytellers are in art. Yeah. I like the turn of phrase, the expressions, like, you know, there's a reason why we are loved absolutely everywhere. It's because of our personalities and our character. And if I'm honest, I turn on the telly and I look at the work, I don't see that. I don't see us in it. Right. Um, and that's not like, that's just, that's just my point. You yep. know, I think it's shared with lots of people. But the potential is there because there's yeah. amazing creatives there. So I just think it's on all of us in the industry to lift it and and, yeah. and to, to get back. Because, I mean, I'm very proud of working on some great work in, in the Connells and, and loads of agencies producing great stuff. And I understand COVID and recessions and all the rest of it, but work is going out there. So it's being made anyway. So let's just get it to a level that we all think is brilliant and, and, and is reflective of us. So that's what I was like very keen to do uh, at BBH. We are, you know, we don't have loads of clients. We didn't intend to come in and just work on everything. We just want to get, you know, get, get the work in Tesco working really strong. We've worked with a few others. There are opportunities, but we only want to do it if we're going to get to great work. Look, I know a ton of people who, you know, creatives and in the industry that, that want to do that. Yeah. So what's holding, what is holding us back? Is it, 
I don't know. Is it, I, do, is it, I, I genuinely it? don't know. So like, I don't naive go and we need to do, you know, I, I know that none of these things are easy because if we all stand up, go, let's make great work. I don't think anyone's going to go, oh, no, I don't actually, I, I'm, you know, I might go home. I don't, like, so I don't believe that that's what we come in every day to do. It's hard to get there, but I think it needs to be, you know, we need to diagnose why properly forensically diagnose why. Um, because it's in there. We're brilliant. Mm. Like we're great crack. Just, just yeah. see that in other places. Yeah. Even um, um, yeah. I don't, and I think I think a lot of people share my point of view. I'm not, and I I'm not being harsh or like I'm no, no. I, we're we will contribute to that as well, right? But I feel yeah. like I feel that's 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 what I'd love to see. Yeah, like I I I did speak to somebody about this. Maybe it was um Richard Carr, but we we were talking about the likes of like in Amsterdam where, you know, lots of global work was still happens. Great work, great. And like, I'm like, why is Dublin not the same? Like, I just, I feel like it's a, it's a hotbed of creativity in all other areas. And, um, you know, and again, it's not, I'm not having a go with any of the work, I, you know, because clients are part of the problem. And it's like, yeah. how do we pause maybe and go, yeah. okay, the ambition for this industry is to be world class. Yeah. Like that should be our ambition. Yeah. And then we go, oh, okay, hang on a second. Yeah. We all want to make yeah. exceptional work. And if we just almost all came together and like, right. you know, like totally. a charter of like, we're going to be like in three years time, people are going to look at Dublin and say, this is where we make our work. Absolutely. And it's impact and I'm going to get really boring now, but it's impact on the economy as well. Like, you know, marketing, advertising, production will have a massive impact for, for, for any government as well, because we, 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 we're, we're a big business. And in the UK, we export so much of that. So, why, why, so I think there's a conversation around how we, how we breed and develop a culture of creativity, which is part of Irish people anyway. We are inherently creative. And, and just being clear on our culture and our expectations from that as well. I do. I think we should all get together and work it out. Um, because my mother absolutely loves advertising. And when I was in New Zealand, Australia, she'd call me and tell me what ads she liked to the point that she would verbatim give me everything that happened. But it was like a director's treatment. It was like, I don't think she could go onto YouTube and just send it to me. But I would list, okay, well, that sounds great. That sounds great. And more recently, she said, well, you lot just try and make me laugh. She said, I am sick of everything being so serious. Could you just yeah. make me laugh? And I was like, okay, Rita, let's see what I can do. So maybe anyone listening to this, if we people should, could just make my mother laugh, you'd be saving me uh, a lot of giving out when I'm at home. <laughs> too serious, too serious. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't disagree. And there is, yeah, there's, there's, there's pockets of it. And look, humor's hard. It's all hard. Humor's hard, but like just really hard, yeah. enjoyable. Like yeah. it can be enjoyable. It can be fun. And um, we're, we're getting, probably we've gone over time, but I, where, sorry, where are you zagging to next for BBH? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I've been meeting Connor. <laughs> oh, I do not know. Uh, where are we? Zag we well, we're not. I'll, I'll just say it's a uh, we. We are committing to delivering exceptional work. That's what we're doing, and I don't know if that's uh, again. Hopefully, that's the direction of everything, and um, we will continue to find industry zags in the way that BPH, you know, our zag process and trying to find that for our clients. But I guess, you know, just do. A credible work and I will be happy if, you know if we grow maintain growth keep growing yeah but above all make work that everybody loves and goes I wish I'd made that and give a culture of people going this is the place for me because I'm thriving but I feel like I'm ho I'm a home and I can you know I feel it's a generous culture people look out for each other people want me to do well if if we can just um do that then I'd be very happy with the year brilliant and look you know winning awards and you, you've won a ton of awards agencies of, of the year and like it, you know again that's a real signal of that is where you're at and I, I love that ambition of you know I wish I'd made yeah I wish I'd made that and there's so much of your work at BBH that you know I certainly look at and go oh, wow I wish, wish we'd made that or wish well, I'd you, been involved would... in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
but it's but it's brilliant. And look, you know, from talking to you, can't I? The, the culture, you know, that that seems to be a BBH, like it's phenomenal, and it's hard, like in an agency, the relentless pace of agencies. You know, it's difficult, and I think there's a word that Emer McCarthy, um, who's wonderful uh, marketer in in Ireland, said to me when we spoke, um, was about being sound. Yeah, like. That's to me, I think like if you wrap it up in a word, like BBH must be a sound place That's full not. of sound people. Be more sound. I like it. Yeah. Emer, you're dead right if you said that. Yeah, no, yeah, actually, just just be sound. Yeah. There you go. Okay. We're gonna, gonna get closer. That then. We're gonna be more sound. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, be I'm going sound. with it. I'll change the sign at the back. Yeah, yes. Karen, thank you so much for taking so much of your time today to talk to me. It was absolutely um just brilliant to chat and just continue to set success with with BBH and and obviously when you're in Do- over in Dublin, let us know and we'll we'll we'll, we'll catch up. Well, absolutely, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed this. It's a great chat, and yes, I'm there next week. Well, I'm I'm there every month now. Are you? Yeah, yeah, great. I keep on surprising my parents, going, but there's sometimes they're going, Jesus, is it you again? Like, yeah. <laughs> I had like 14 years of me being in Australia, and now like a lot. You're too close. Oh, yeah, I'm there too much. <laughs> Oh, the novelty has worn off, let's just say. Um, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. As I said, like I'm kind of, I'm over there a bit and, and as I said, we want to grow on the right things. We want to do great work, really. Uh, and we're not putting that pressure under anyone to be, you know, massively running after growth that we can't maintain or growth or yeah. deliver work. And that's that's the focus. And I'm a laser on that, yeah. Brilliant. And through it, we'll make Rita laugh. Please, please. Brilliant. Thanks a million. See ya. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I mean, yeah, Karen is, as Emer McCarthy calls it, sound. In everything she talked about today, it all came down to one thing, really. People. The people she works with, the people she works for, and the people who see the work BBH makes. She really cares about that and those people. Also, I guess, ambition. And her sign behind her said, work hard and be kind. And I think that can be done while still having ambition and wanting success and wanting fame. All those things can actually live together, I think, as Karen is proving. Such a pleasure to speak to such an incredible leader in our industry who absolutely adores what she does. It is infectious and a reminder how lucky we are to do what we do. Well, that is it for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to That's What I Call Marketing wherever you are listening or watching. Please do rate the show if you enjoyed it and share if you liked it. Uh, we are on Instagram at That's What I Call Marketing. You can watch the uh, YouTube videos on That's What I Call Marketing. And we're on Twitter, X, that's underscore marketing. And of course, if we can help you with your growth through marketing, visit That's What I Call Marketing.com and see how we can help. Thanks again to the Indie List for their support of this show. If you need experienced, excellent marketing talent, go to the IndieList.ie. Don't go anywhere else. The indie list.ie.